welcome back to Ted's Fish Room. In this third installment on how to package and ship fish, we're going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite tools for packing fish, and that's a heat sealer. This, what I use it for most is sealing the corners of the bags. So really simple. You adjust the heater element based upon the thickness of the bag. These are three, three mil bags. I set it at about two. And then all you got to do is peg the corners. Right, so that's one way to peg a corner. The other way to peg a corner is to open the bag up, pull the corner 90 degrees, flatten it out. And then peg it. And when you use a heat sealer, you gotta let it cool a little bit before you pull it off. It's best to peel it off. And the difference is this side of the bag now is gusseted, whereas this side is not. So we'll put a little bit of water in so you can kind of see the difference in the bag. All right, so notice that this side, um, it's still a flat bag, and that certainly has its uses, but this side over here you're making it into a much more three-dimensional shape of a bag. All right, so I'm gonna take another bag, and I'm gonna peg the corners where the bottom is gusseted. Okay, so now I have effectively a flat square bottom bag that I've made myself. Put some water into it. And as you can see, the bag literally will stand up, no problems whatsoever. Now, you can tie this up with a rubber band. Just like normal. And it's gonna sit inside the, uh, the bag just fine or sit inside your box. But you can also use the heat sealer to create what I call a narrow bag. And that can be very useful for shipping. So I'm gonna take this I'm going to actually get quite a bit of the air out of it. And I'm going to fold the top over, roll it down, then I'm going to lay it into the sealer, and I'm going to pull it up so that it's flat. Notice that the air is still in there. And I'm going to pull it until I see it start to expand with air, and I'm going to peg it. And now I've got this bag that sits up very nicely and it's got a very narrow top. And you take your scissors, this has a cutter on it, but it, it doesn't cut very cleanly sometimes. So I can take my scissors, cut that off, test it to make sure it doesn't leak. If it doesn't leak, and that bag is pretty good to go. Now there are times when you're shipping fish when you're going to have to ship fish singly in a bag. Bettas, large gouramis, uh, cichlids especially, catfish like Sandanus catfish, anything particularly spiny, you have to be particularly careful about how they're packed. So we're going to pack up using my heat sealer, using the individual fish method, these gouramis because they're pretty representative of large fish. You would not have to pack these individually because they're not going to mean to each other, but think of these as a three inch spiny cichlid and you're trying to get several of them into a small box. So here I have one of my bags that I pegged the bottom, okay? And I'm going to put some water in the bag. And with spiny fish or big fish, it's always very important that you put water in the bag first because if you put the bag, you pour the fish into the bag, you can actually pop the bag or have the fish spine the bag. So I'm going to very carefully use my hand and I'm going to put the fish into the bag. There we go. Those fish is in there. Now I'm going to take that bag and I'm going to fold it over, put it in my heat sealer. The hardest part is getting the bag flat across the seal. And then I'm going to put it in there and pull it until it starts to tighten up. Then I'm going to peg it. There we go. 
Now I'm going to check that. Let's make sure there's no leak. There is no leak. There you go. You can see no water is dripping out of it. And I'm going to trim this bag. Now, while it's dry, I'm going to take the top corner and I'm going to fold it out just like the bottom. Put it in the heat sealer. You may want to turn the heat sealer up a little bit because now you're doing quite a bit of plastic. Put a cooper sack. Be careful to peel it off and then go back over and do the other corner. You can only do this because you left some slack in the bag. Remember from what we talked about in the first video, you don't want your bags to be overly tight anyway. Alright, so there we go. Now I've got an individually heat sealed fish and I'm double checking to make sure that all my seals are good and tight and they are. Now, so what's the advantage of doing this? Um, notice that this bag, looking at it from this side, is only about two inches thick compared to this side, which is six inches thick. I mean, this is a six inch bag. So if this was completely inflated, round, it would take up a lot more space than one of these narrow bags will. So you could actually say you take two of these fish, and here's another one, put them side by side, and these two bags with one fish take up about the same amount of space as a single bag if it was tied up the top of the rubber band. This is what these heat sealers can do for you. They can save some space inside the bag. Now, just like normal, I'm going to add my absorbent material to the bottom of the bag. Now I'm going to put my grommies in side by side, kind of in a square pattern. Squeeze all the air. Oh, we got my absorbent material on top. I should probably mention, those are not double bagged. I'm saving some bags. So normally I would slip another bag around those so they'd be double bagged, uh, just like we do normally like we saw in the first video. Tie this off. Okay, so there we go. So, there is a package with heat sealed bags ready to go.